is to gain nearness to Allah, is to ultimately get awareness, like you said, Ihsan. That's the ultimate objective of Salah. But if you're praying Salah just for movements and just so you don't get bad deeds, then the intention is wrong, isn't it? Yeah, so the intention has to be that you're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain taqwa, to gain nearness to Him. Um, and that's the objective of all forms of worship. And that's, that's what you're supposed to do, like even before Salah, like people say, uh, how do I improve my Salah? Uh, my, my Salah is not at that level. But if a person is just teaching, no, just pray and it will be at that level. No, if you speak to the people of knowledge, they would say, look, just like a person that's preparing for a boxing match, if he, if he doesn't do any preparation beforehand, he's going to go into the boxing ring and he's going to get knocked out very quickly. So, uh, so a boxer, whenever he's preparing, you will see him, uh, you know, punching a bag where somebody that doesn't know what this is about, they might think, well, what on earth is he doing? Or is he punching something that's not punching back? Um, and then he starts pulling stuff, he does the rowing and he starts w doing weights and then he starts going jogging. The whole point of that is, is preparing your mindset, is getting you ready for when you enter the ring and the ring is Salah. And then when you start Salah, because your mindset is ready and you're prepared, your Salah has more weight behind it. It's like there's another narration that says, if a person doesn't eat halal, they don't watch halal, they don't do halal, and then they ask Allah, and then they're surprised that their dua is unaccepted. But everything that the person is doing is haram. So Islam is interlinked. By presenting one thing by itself as a ritual, you're 100% right. It, it, it turns the deen into a mockery. Yeah, and it makes it seem not practical to somebody that is living in the 21st century. It does have, it should and it has to have a spiritual effect on you. And it does and should uh, make you refrain from sins. For example, if a person is with a bad relationship with his mother and he prays the Salah, after the Salah, that Salah should have an effect on him. It should make him reflect. In fact, there was a study done, if I'm um, not mistaken, um, I think it was in about 2008 or something, and that study said that prayer it calms the uh, amygdala. So amygdala is part of the brain that makes a person feel very stressful, agitated. The fight or flight. The flight or flight response, exactly. So we have even scientific reasons or justifications of why praying salah can calm a person. So I mean, if science can tell us how Salah is calming us, then surely religion should have something more to offer. And the more that it offers is purification of the heart. It removes sins from the heart. It makes you see things more clearer, more calmer. So I, I would say to him, when you're teaching Salah, definitely teach it with an emphasis on spirituality as well because that's the emphasis of Islam. That's it. That's why I thought that the pillars and the Islam are so they were different, like a different side to it. How do they connect in again? Yeah, so, it's, uh, so praying Salah and doing Dhikr, it ultimately leads you to Ihsan. So Ihsan is the goal, Salah is the means. I think that's like in one sentence if I was to put it, yeah. These rituals are worship to the means and the means is taqwa, God consciousness. For example, even with uh, Ramadan and fasting, whenever we ask anybody, oh, why do you fast? They say, oh, so we feel what the poor people feel. That's one of the reasons. However, that's not what the Quran says. The Quran says we fast to gain taqwa, God consciousness. That's the objective, that's the goal. However, getting, uh, feeling what the poor people feel and, and other such similarity, uh, other such reasons, they are peripheries, they're like branches. They're not like the main trunk or the main root. And the main root with any ibadah is taqwa, is God consciousness. That you're going down the street and you fear Allah. Yeah? If you're in a situation, you see maybe 50 pounds on the floor, your salah should affect your decision at that moment in time. That's, and that's the beauty of Islam. Like Islam is a practical religion. Whilst other people will say, yes, our, we aim to get close. <laughs> he does that every week. If you want, we can swap. If you feel threatened, yeah. Uh, episode.
I've seen through it. It's the I see uh, around constant reformations of Christianity. It's, it's become a shell of its former self. So what they're doing now is they're taking principles and they're taking a new age ideas and they're kind of merging the two. Yeah. So that's so what he will do. There's, there's, there's a term that he uses even when he's talking. Like he likes talking about um, novelists like Dostoevsky and stuff like that. But he'll he'll ultimately you notice he'll link it to Christianity. But what he does is, um, there's a term, uh, I've forgotten it now, what he says is, these stories, begins with A, it's like they're, they're figures, they're, I guess if I was to use a simpler word, I'll say they're, they're metaphors, and that's the kind of thing that he goes for. Certain things like even certain Muslims, they will say, I think the Qadianis, like they say, oh, Isa, it was, it was a metaphorical rising to the heavens. But I mean, all the literature, the Quran and the Hadith say otherwise. But uh, going back to the point, you're 100% right because if you go into the whole uh, Jordan Peterson, Russell Brand, probably you know Russell Brand, is it? you know Russell Brand, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry? They finished. I don't mind, I mean, we're here. You can bring it here and then you can go back. Yeah, because they've already moved already, isn't it? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, so that's, that's a very good point because um, it's unfortunate that some Muslims, the way they preach the religion, it's exactly this. I'll give you an example. When parents ask their children, they say, Nawaz Pradi, are you Pakistani? Or? Yeah, Pakistani. So, have you prayed your Salah? Have you prayed your Salah? Have you prayed your Salah? But the scholars, they say, rather than constantly asking, have you prayed your Salah, say, Nawaz Pradi, how do you feel about it? Now that you prayed your salah, how do you feed? So automatically from a young age, you're getting a child to think, you know what, my salah is supposed to materialize it to something. So that, this is what I do as a primary school, I teach year five students. So that's what I try to do even from a young age. That even when they're praying salah, there's one salah, I call it the rocket salah, that when you're praying your salah, even before salah, you do an exercise where you say, Allah is watching me, Allah is watching me, Allah is watching me. You say that a good 10-15 times and when, when you kind of in, into habit and then you start your salah Allahu Akbar, it's still like a track, like a chorus of a music track still running in your head reminding you. So it's these sorts of techniques sister, that I think as educators is very important for us to be educated as educators and then educate the children otherwise you're 100% right, we're, we're pushing forward this. I wouldn't mindless. say it's almost like mindless. It is. It? And that's why I would take Russell Brand out of out of that because Russell Brand's, thing Russell Brand's he's very inclined towards Hinduism. What would he say about Islam? With regards to Islam, he's very wishy washy in the sense that he would say it's 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 a means to God. Like it doesn't matter what it is. That's yeah, yes. Yeah. No matter what means you take. Yeah, it's it's still to God. But I mean, uh, the Dr. Zaki Naik approach, which is you got somebody that says one plus one is one, one plus one is two, one plus one is. Although it may be a bit simplistic, but I mean, it, it, it does make sense in the sense that you've got so many people giving so many answers. But ultimately speaking, there is going to be one answer. For example, you've got one one group of people saying, no, God has a son. Another one saying, no, God doesn't have a son. No, God has a son, God has a mother, and there's a. You know, hundreds of other godlings as well. How, how on earth can you um, reconcile all these three uh, world views? You can't. So naturally speaking, there, there, there will have to be a time when a person goes, you know what, I really need to look into this because there's only going to be one that, that is ultimately true. Yes, we do need to respect the other ones. And yes, I'm sure there's a, there's a, it's come from a source. But ultimately speaking, there is only one answer. But yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to hear what the Hindu teacher has to kind of say with the glass of how he's. Open-minded, actually, to be 
compared to him, but I was thinking that because he's on screen, yeah. I think too deep sometimes, and I'm like, I don't want kids to go away with just knowing that you do this in Islam, you do that, and you do that, and they just equate the Russell Brand new age idea. Yes, that yes. Of the way we, you know, we get the same result of doing whatever we do. Yes. But I was thinking of saying that maybe Islam is about also our reason of existing as well. There's that we're here to cultivate the land, maybe they can start with growing something or... Uh, I mean, thinking because he's an academic, maybe just... Um, if we just give him like a few points, it might not necessarily materialize into anything. I mean, reflecting on it, two books do come to mind that do go a bit deeper. One that might be really relevant to him is called a it's called a think a thinking person's guide to Islam. Yeah, and uh, that's a, it's a very good book where he has delved in deeper into the kind of spiritual aspects, and he's linked uh, old age kind of thinkers and philosophers like Socrates and Plato and he has kind of looked into it. It's a very good book. A Thinking Person's Guide to Islam. Yeah, and the other one that I would say is um, Imam Ghazali's book. That's a very good book as well. It's a concise Ihya uh, Ulumuddin. Yeah, these two books are in English. Ihya, um, it's, it's something really fancy like uh, the, the light of guidance or something like that. Yeah, so um, these two books they, they they delve a bit deeper. They give the spiritual aspect as well, and they cover the the five uh, pillars as well. So that should do it. Because I sometimes like I was thinking of maybe talking about why Allah created us. Like talking about I didn't well, I didn't create you except for worship. But the only thing with said that's a bit problematic. Somebody did say that. No, because the. The, the Quran says that Allah has created us وَمَا خَلَقُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That Allah has created jinn and man for his worship. But, but that's the thing, that, that ayah, it's a, it's, it's a very kind of condensed ayah. You need to then unpack it. Like, what do you mean by worship? When I say worship to you, what comes to your mind? Just off the top. Exactly. Exactly. But an average person, they would say, oh, prayer, doing tasbih. Uh, reading the Quran and then they're running out of things to say but I, I would even say giving da'wah in the park or uh, seeing a non-Muslim and offering them a seat on the bus you know what I'm saying going out with the family and praying your dhar salah as well so there's a lot to unpack from yeah, oh yeah worship it's the term worship sister because what happens is you, what, we, what you have to realize is we, we have definitions that are in the dictionary but what we're doing is you've got 1400 years worth of tradition that now you, you're trying to kind of force it into English terms you can't do like worship and um, slavery and stuff like that it's not what it means in the 21st century sense like this is very it needs to be read in context you know what I'm saying so it, sometimes I think literature like this it'll be worth him reading through maybe in the holidays or something because for him I mean as a teacher you need to have a, a, a lesson plan and for him, over there, sometimes you have to think on the spot, especially when students ask you a question. So it might be worth, um, especially um, it, because students can ask the most outlandish of questions. They're not prepared. Then, are they? not prepared. They're not prepared. So definitely these two books, The Thinking Person's Guide to Islam and Imam Ghazali's book, Ahiya Ulumuddin, The Abridged Version. It's a small book. It's about, both of them are about that big. And, and just tell him to just before a lesson, oh, uh, before a lesson, just kind of uh, flip through that and uh, yeah just use that in the lesson thank you so much mother my pleasure, <laughs> thank my pleasure. You. yes of course of course assalamu alaikum how are you young man mashallah are you enjoying your day out yeah yeah you too yeah Mashallah, you've raised them well. Assalamu <laughs> <laughs> alaikum, how are you? Okay, Alhamdulillah, not too much. <laughs> we really enjoy your videos, Mashallah. Very encouraging, Alhamdulillah, keep it up in this time, 21st century. We need this kind of thing. Yes. Attracts a lot of youngsters, youth. I often tell them, go on to yours, which is very good, Alhamdulillah. Massage is a bit different. I think this is what people yes. are after, something on YouTube, something different. Exactly. So keep it up, mashallah. Exactly. Of course, of course. Of course. Of course. watching your videos. Mashallah, mashallah. My students, I even tell them, you know, 
Watch Mountain Jannah because you learn Islam in a fun way. We really enjoy as well. Keep up the hard work. Jazakallah, Jazakallah. Do you want me to take a photo with you? Do you want a photo? No, it's alright. Do you follow? It's done. Check it out. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. I'm sure you recognize a lot. Sorry? I'm sure you recognized a lot. Well, you know, okay. I don't want to be that cheesy guy who just comes on and says, oh, look, I know you. No, but no, I don't. No, no, bro. You know, I enjoy your, your content. It shows that you've got that um, edge when it comes to engaging an audience. What do you think? Okay. If I touch that now, <laughs> brother, is this yours? You need to have heavy. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Who's, who's are these? 